How you guys doing? Randy Richard in the shop. I, I haven't been up uh, on the video here uh, recently. Uh, my uh, my neighbor uh, wife passed away, so that makes it a little bit tough to get some things done. Um, very unexpected. I only have four neighbors, so it uh, pretty important to help out and do what I can. So, anyway, I did receive a couple of viewer appreciation gifts. I've never received anything from anybody, but Brad over at Tactical Keychains, I had made a comment I didn't have any stickers. And he uh, sent me a couple things. He sent me a couple of stickers for the toolboxes there. He also... Uh, Threw in a couple of his tie mags. Those are incredibly strong little magnets he's got going there. Uh, they are really cool. And I'm going to use those over there by the lathe. I have a little uh, metal board above my lathe, uh, the Logan lathe there. I have to distinguish which lathe now. The Logan lathe uh, to hold up some, be able to hold up plans and stuff. And he sent me a couple of... Uh, Three uh, scrap pieces of uh, three eighths uh, titanium, and uh, been thinking of a plan for those. It's not fully developed yet, but I am thinking on it. So we'll uh, we'll get to doing something with those. They'll be they'll be kind of fun, I think. Uh, so that's what uh, Brad sent me over. At Tactical keychains. He's got a lot of cool stuff. He does. There's his card. And uh, visit his channel. He uh, makes a lot of things, uh, a lot of Kickstarter projects and stuff he does. Uh, they're pretty, pretty nifty. Uh, so please uh, visit his channel. He's got some good stuff. Then the other stuff I've received is from uh, Barzy Industrial, Stan Zinkowski. He sent me some squares. I think he did a video making them. Or a little showed something. These these little squares are artwork. You, I didn't have them blue, blue them because I'm going to do a video on blowing these. Uh, these are nice. They're all hardened, ground. These things are beautiful. You, you couldn't. I tell you, I don't. I don't know anybody who makes something this this fine. <laughs> but I mean there's some good tools out there <laughs> and I've used a lot of really good tools uh, but I tell you these are super high quality uh, these are amazing just amazing yeah these 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 I consider artwork so Stan thank you thank you very much and Brad thank you for yours there uh, the, these are absolutely amazing how nice these are these the little ones fit perfect stand on my vice, fit perfect. But it, these are, yeah. Uh, if you can afford to buy some, or if Stan's kind enough to send you something, man, these are unbelievable. Just unbelievable. Very, very. I I don't know what to say, Stan. Really, I don't. I I'm amazed. Uh, I don't know if the dovetail cutter was quite this good. <laughs> These are amazing. So thank you. Thank you again. Uh, he's got his uh, little logo on there. The old Bar Z. I don't know if you can see that very well. There it is. So we'll blow these up. Uh, we'll do a video blowing them. Uh, I think they'll come out really, really nice. Really nice. So... Right now, I've been uh, working uh, on the Lance lathe. Um, let's see here. I got a. This is that change gear. And those uh, two teeth you see there are missing. I'm going to repair this one. But I was able to find a gear, uh, actually online, uh, PT International, and uh, I'll have to put a keyway in it. But that that's it. Uh, it'll be the same size and everything. Uh, basically is this it's a plate gear it's smooth it doesn't have a recess or any slight hub or anything 
I might machine it so it looks more like this. Uh, it's a little wider than this gear anyway, so I have a little bit of room there to to, ch to uh, maybe machine it up so it looks like this gear here. Uh, but I'm also going to repair this one. There's not really very much load on these things these here. Uh, so um, the, whether I'm going to insert it and then cut some teeth and recut the teeth uh, or just braise them up. I'm, I'm kind of tending toward the insert thing since it is two teeth. This one here is the uh, pinion gear. Uh, you can see there one tooth, one tooth missing. Yeah, but it's integral to the shaft. This is all one piece. And this is an odd module. It's a, these are both metric gears. Uh, th this gear, the, the change gear is a one and a half module, 1.5 module. This is a, from what I can tell, this is a 2.25. This is, uh, it's not two and a half and it's not two. So it's got to be 2.25 module. Uh, so this is only have one tooth missing. Uh, I'm nah, on the fence here whether I'm going to fix, even fix this or not, but probably will repair this one and use it for a little while <coughs> since this is since it's a modular piece here. Uh, I can't seem to buy one a gear and then put it on mount it on a shaft. I, I I can't find anybody who makes them. There's not very many people making metric gears, so I'll have to make a gear and. I'll make it all one piece like this, uh, mod, uh, integral. But the, uh, the other problem with this I found is the shaft is has a little bit of a bend in it. Actually, Very, it's not much, but it's enough that when you take when I took it out and when I put it, if I try to put it back in, it you can feel how tight it is and then gets loose and stuff. You know, so uh, it, it and then you, I rolled it on a surface plate and you can see that there is it is bent a little bit. So that hole's kind of funny. It's a tapered uh, pin, taper pin hole, but it's not on center. Kind of odd. So I've been doing some measurements and, and getting a drawing um, made up. Actually, I think I have a drawing made up already. I got a drawing made up uh, of the dimensions for a blank for the for this setup here for this gear. So uh, probably going to get to. I'll probably make a whole one of these. I don't have a, any cutters for them, so I'm, I'm probably going to make up a single point cutter on a uh, set up on a boring bar and do it in the mill and mill them out. There's only 14 teeth. It, it won't be too bad. So that's the update on the gears. Uh, I'll show you, I don't know, a couple other things, I guess. Uh, today uh, I picked up parts, so I'm going to get my wiring for the shop. I have to wire run a new line over for the lance lathe and the closing anyway so I'm gonna run a whole new line over new breaker all that stuff and get that cable in here today and uh, we'll I had to order a couple parts so that they won't come in for a few days and the VFD won't be here till next week anyway so I got a few days to try to get some things done that's it I think that's about about it. I'm looking over there parts of what else I got to show you. <laughs> it's just some electrical parts. So, so we'll get that cable in today and uh, do some maybe some more cleanup. I did some more cleanup on the lance uh, already and checking stuff. So, I I did remove the I checked the run out on the chuck. I put a carburetor in mill in the in the chuck a uh, old one and. Uh, Check the run out. It's running out seven thousandths TIR on the on the three jaw. So I removed the three jaw, cleaned it up, and measured the spindle. Spindle runs at less than a less than a thousandths out TIR. So I put the three jaw back on, cleaned up, remeasured, and I got it down to about a thousandths TIR on the three jaw. So for a three jaw, that's uh, pretty good to me. That's uh, awfully good actually. Pretty happy. So that's about it today. So thank you, Stan, for the squares, and thank you, Brad, for the 
magnets, stickers, and the titanium stock. Uh, never used, worked with titanium before. Uh, well, I got it. Well, I've never worked with titanium. I used titanium parts on uh, some s equipment that made hypochlorite uh, on the ships. Uh, we had to have, uh, had, they have titanium tubes and they had to be welded and things like that. So we had to have somebody come in and do that kind of work. Uh, hypochlorite is a generator and it generates it from seawater with electricity. And then the hypochlorite is injected into saltwater intakes on ships. And then the salt water, that kills uh, 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 marine growth. Uh, animals, bar barnacles, and all that kind of, all, everything that's in salt water, it's amazing what's in there. But it kills all the little animals and all that, so you don't get marine growth in your piping, of your salt water piping of the ship. Uh, it's basic, it's basically Clorox. It generates Clorox. <laughs> so, uh, it's, a, it's a, a type of chlorine uh, called hypochlorite. So, but anyway, so I do I should say I do have some experience uh, there with uh, titanium, but I've never machined any. Anyway, thank you for the magnets. Went flying. I'll find them. And thank you for the stock, Brad. But uh, thanks to all the subscribers out there. We went past uh, 1,300 uh, the other day. Uh, so that's uh, absolutely amazing to me. I really appreciate it. And I'll put the call out there again. Anybody with any information or knows anybody with any information on a Lance lathe or Zubal, Z-U-B-A-L, lathe, uh, then uh, the Lance lathe I said before was made in North America for North America. They're a Spanish uh, made lathe. So far, uh, things I've done, everything else I've checked on this, this lathe uh, is in great shape. And not worn and not really worn out or anything. Uh, they crashed it a few times. Uh, the compound's got some pretty good beaver marks there uh, from banging it. But other than that, which it hasn't damaged any other uh, any other parts of the lathe, other than these gears. I think these gears are probably from a crash right there. I, I think that was broke from a crash. So, all right, thanks. Uh, let me get back to work today, and uh, we'll uh, get something up hopefully in a few more days, uh, maybe making these uh, gear blanks or doing some repairs on the gear blanks here. I should have a few days. I should be able to get some of that done. All right, thank you. Talk to you later. Here we go, Brad. Here's some uh, stickers on this side of my list box. I think uh, I'll go right there. We'll just uh, put it on if I can. Get it apart. There we go, Brad. How's that? Next to all the other stickers. Silver helicopters. That's who my son worked for. Todd's Concrete. This is a business. Um, uh, my son-in-law and, and daughter in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Uh, they own that business there. Todd's Concrete. And all right. Little apples. Google. Renthal chain wheels. Um, that's something from my son. Some motorcycle one. Mammoth leg. And tactical keychains. There we go. Oh, that's a outfit I used to work for. This, one of those safety kind of sticker things. Uh, sea River Maritime. That's who I used to work for. So, there you go, Dick, Brad. You're officially on the box. There's a few others on this side, I think, too. There we go. A few more. Trout Unlimited. What else? Exxon. He used to work for them. That's what Sea River used to be. Uh, well, Sea used to be Exxon, and then uh, Sea River, uh, they split Sea River off as a wholly owned subsidiary. So Sea River 
is excellent. So, anyway, some fishing gear from fishing gear wines. Yeah, so here's the Lance. Uh, I got the, you know, the, the apron part there, the carriage part off the lay that uh, disassemble the bearing block set up for the lead screw, the drive shaft, and the that's for the uh, forward reverse uh, control lever. And uh, remove that, and then uh, I was able to uh, slide this off right here. So I'm gonna, it's got some crap in there. Looks like they used to turn a lot of plastics with it. There's a lot of plastic crap. Not a lot of, there's some metal brass chips. I don't know when it ever was in production use or it was, it was in a Heinz factory, I understand. So they weren't using it very hard, except they weren't paying attention when they crashed it a few times. So I'm going to clean all that up. Cleaned all this stuff up already, and uh, I don't know. Can you see? Yeah, there's some. There's a little barf mark there, and on the compound, uh, I don't have very good lighting. But I can slide this down. Uh, the compound. You can see the compound's got some some beat marks there, some beaver marks chewed up, and one over there. But I can live with that. I, I've i only bumped a chuck once in 30-something years of using a lathe. Uh, I wouldn't, it wasn't even a crash. It was more of a manual bump, you know, type of thing. Yeah. So, you know, these are probably underpower crashes where it chews it up pretty good. But other than that, and I got some of the electrical part. Of course, putting the VFD on, I don't need con a lot of the contactors and that are in there, and some of those, you know, some of the other stuff they got in there. Uh, I'll be removing all the a lot of electrical controls out and doing. A, I'll completely rewire everything. I'll replace it all. It it could use it, but other than that, things are cleaned up, put on. Can't wait to use it.